In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how we can use the Toolpath Templates feature of your software to save you time when you're working with a job that uses one set of standard toolpaths for multiple different but similar projects. In this demonstration, we'll look at the features from a nested cabinets for production angle. Keep in mind that Toolpath Templates can be used for all sorts of applications. By setting up your job in a logical way, we can use a special feature of many of our toolpath strategies that allow us to automatically select certain vectors on a specific layer. If you find yourself creating the same type of job over and over again, putting a bit of time into a toolpath template will save you time in the long run. Okay, to get started, I have a brand new instance of our software up here and running, and we're going to open up a file that was given to us and exported out from a specialty cabinet uh, making piece of software. So we're going to go ahead and go to open an existing file, and we're going to navigate over to our tutorials file, and we'll select the file called samplecabinet.crv, and we're going to open that up. Now right away, you'll see in our 2D view, we have some vectors here, um, and these have all been organized in a very special way, and we'll look at that in a second. But what's really important about this, and something for you to remember, is that even though we got this from a uh, cabinet manufacturer, you could actually create this in your software from scratch if you wanted to. You just needed to go ahead and follow some very basic organizational things. Now if we go ahead and take a look at our Layers tab, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of different layers here all set up for us. And this was all, all this information came along with the file that we received from the cabinet maker. You can also get access to all of those different layers by using this layers drop down here. So everything that we do to the left, you can mirror here in this drop down at the top of your screen. Over here in this list, we have, um, obviously, this has been set up um, in a very specific way. We've got some holes and we've got some dados and we have a cut um, layer. So. Obviously, we are going to be using the, the information that is on these different layers, going to be used to cut holes, but it's been broken up into three different layers because maybe there are, there's an important reason why your hinge holes will be only be cut a certain way, maybe to a certain depth, where drawer holes will be cut in a different way, but they'll go all the way through the material. So the vectors that are on those layers are going to accommodate those specific toolpath strategies. And we have, again, some dado layers here all set up for us ahead of time. I want to point out a couple of things about this layers list. First of all, you see this little um, icon here with the turn down page with the two vectors on it. If you see a turn down page without any vectors on it, that means there's nothing on that layer at all. It's just a layer with a name. But if I go ahead and double click on this one here called hinge holes, you'll see that it will select all of the vectors that are on that particular layer. And that's true for any of these. It doesn't matter which one it is. And I can do that again from the drop down up top here as well, if I would like to, depending on where I am or how close I am to things. Now, this has been set up, obviously, in a very specific way, like I said. And it's, it's done this way so that we can go ahead and create a toolpath template. Most of cabinet manufacturers would be cutting jobs like this all the time with the same sort of naming convention to their layers. Um, and this process makes it really easy for them to just import in a new set of vectors, make sure they're all in the same layers, and we can go ahead and create the toolpaths right away um, based on the vectors that are on specific layers. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a second and look at the vectors that we have here in our 2D view. If we have a look at this rightmost rectangle here and we select it, we'll see that we're given some information down in the right-hand bottom corner of our screen. First of all, it'll tell us what layer that particular vector is on. So it's on the bottom blind dato. It'll also give us some information about the size of that vector or the dimensions of that vector. So we can see that the width of that is 0.625 and the height is 23 inches. This is really important because this will help to inform us how we might want to deal with cutting out this area of our project. In this case, we know that the, the width of that vector is not greater than twice the width of the tool that I plan on using, which is going to be a 3 8 tool. And so I would be best suited to use a profile toolpath cutting on the inside of that vector. That would make a very efficient toolpath for this particular cut. Now, if we have a look at this vector, you'll see that, again, it's telling us where it lives in our actual layers. And also, it tells me that the height of that is 0.78, which is more than double the thickness of my tool that I plan on using. So what I might choose to do in this case is go ahead and use a pocket toolpath. That way I wouldn't have any extra material left 
in the center of that rectangle from a profile toolpath. Now I've gone ahead and reorganized all of these layers over here after looking at all these different vectors just to make sure I understood maybe what we'd be doing. So we have all the holes at the top. These will all be using the drill toolpath. We've got the first um, three uh, tool uh, layers here. Any vectors on those three layers, we're going to be using a profile toolpath for. The bottom three will be for a pocket toolpath. And then we have a final profile toolpath for our cutout. Now let's go ahead now and take a look at how we might deal with the tooling of those and actually creating our toolpath template. Okay, let's go ahead now and head over to our toolpaths tab. We're gonna do that by clicking this icon right here. You see that now over on our right hand side, we have access to our toolpaths tab. As always, the first thing we should do is have a look at our material setup. So let's go ahead and click here. Now we're gonna see that our thickness of our material is set to 0.75 of an inch. Our XY datum is set to the bottom right corner. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface and our rapid Z gaps above our material are 0.2 of an inch. Our plunge is 0.2 of an inch and our home start positions are set up properly. Now all of this information here needs to be safe and appropriate for your machine and your job setup. And this all looks good for this demonstration. So I can go ahead now and click OK. So now we can go ahead and move on to creating some tool paths. So now, first of all, and this is a good sort of habit to get into when you're creating a tool path for a tool path template is to make sure you don't have any vectors selected. So to unselect any vectors that are currently selected, all you need to do is just go ahead and click in the white space of your job and that will make sure that you deselect all or any selected vectors. Now the first tool path that we're going to create is going to be for the hinge holes and that's going to be a drilling tool path or a drill tool path. So we're going to go ahead and select that out of our tool path operations. And the first thing we're going to need to do is tell it the start position and the cut depth. So we're going to start on the top of our material and I want to cut down about a half an inch in our material. So that's already been filled out here for me from the last time I used this particular form. So that's perfect. I can choose the bit that I would like to use. So in this case, it's going to be a 118 degree drill bit with a quarter inch shank. If that's wrong, I can go ahead and use my select button here and it'll bring up my tool database and I can choose a different drill bit if I'd like to. And I have two set up here for hardwood on my large machine. So these settings will be safe and appropriate for, for that setup. So I can just go ahead and select that. We're not going to use PEC drilling, so we're not going to touch on that. But if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and have a look in our help menu on how that all works. We're not going to dwell at the bottom of each pass, and we're not going to use a vector selection order because we're going to use our vector selector to go ahead and do all of that work for us. So right now, you'll see that our vector selector is set to manual. That's the way it normally is set up. That way I can go in and manually choose certain vectors if I'd like to. But in this case, I want the software to do the work for me. So we're going to go into the selector. When I do that, up pops our vector selector. Now this is where we're going to actually tell the software what vectors to choose, where to find them, and then whether or not I want it to always do that every time I run this toolpath. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to see that in our selection area, there's nothing selected at this moment, which is perfect. Now I have the choice to, to use this filter here. So it's going to look at the data that's on the layer or in my job and choose the vectors that correspond to these filters. So right now I don't want it to choose any open vectors because these are actually going to be drill holes. So they should be circles that are closed vectors. So we're going to go ahead and choose closed vectors and do the open checkbox there. We're not going to choose all the closed vectors because there might be some other data that slipped on there like rectangles, text or whatever. So really we only want it to choose the circles. Now I could also add some more um, filters to that. So I could select all the circles. I could select circles matching a certain tool diameter or the tool diameter I have set up for this tool path. Or I could actually give it some very specific information to choose very specific circles. In this case, I'm just going to choose all of the circles uh, and that should be okay. Now you notice that right here still, we had to, we haven't chosen any vectors yet or the software hasn't found any vectors. And that's not gonna happen until we actually tell it where to go look for those. So I can actually look at all of my layers if I wanted to. 
If I do that, you'll see there's 56 vectors, but I don't want it to look at all of these different layers. I only want it to look at one specific layer, and that's the hinge holes layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and you'll see that now I have eight objects selected up here. And also in my 2D view, you'll see that's actually selected those for me. So I can see exactly what it's chosen uh, to fit into this filter. Now the last thing I need to do is to make sure that I associate this set of filters, this level information, to this toolpath every time I go and calculate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that box there and then I'll click close. Now the last thing I need to do is just give it a name and I want the name to match the actual layer that I'm getting those vectors from. So in that case, it's gonna be up here under hinge holes. So if I just go ahead and select that, if I right click on that and go down to copy, then I can just simply go over here. I'm gonna select the one and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say paste and then I can go ahead and calculate my toolpath. You see that now? I can see in my 3D view, I've got the, the, the toolpath, uh, the wireframe of that all ready to go, and I can preview that visible toolpath, and we can see exactly what it's gonna do. And that looks pretty good to me, I'm happy with that. So let's close this down, and now I'm gonna go back to my 2D view again. We're gonna work through the other two drill tool paths, which are exactly the same as what we just created. Why we're putting them in different tool paths is that down the road we might decide that maybe the drawer holes are actually going to be deeper or may only need to go halfway or a third of the way or all the way through the material. So this will give us the flexibility to modify that if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and create those two extra tool paths and then we'll take a look at the fourth tool path in a second. Okay, there we have it. Those are all the drill tool paths set up and they're set up as templates. Now let's go ahead and look at the first Dato tool path we need to create. Let's go ahead now and create our first Dato tool path. And so for this, again, we wanna make sure that we don't have anything selected in our 2D view. So we're just gonna click in the white space here. That'll deselect anything that might be selected. Go over to our tool path operations and we're gonna choose the profile tool path. We're gonna have a start depth of zero and a cut depth of 0.375. We need to have our advanced toolpath options open. We didn't point that out before, but if you can't find the vector selector, that's because it's hidden away inside your advanced toolpath options. So have that opened up. We're gonna use a 3 8 inch end mill to cut these out with. And we're gonna cut on the inside of any of the vectors that the vector selector finds. We're not gonna do a separate last pass. We're not gonna add any tabs in. We're not gonna worry about any of this information here. We're just gonna straight on to the vector selector. Again, it's set to manual by default. Uh, that would be the normal way you would select your vectors just by choosing them from the 2D view. But in this case, I'm gonna to go to the selector and we're gonna have a peek at this. So we're gonna change the filters here and also the layers that we want it to look uh, at. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose all closed vectors, okay? And we're gonna make sure that we choose not the drawer holes, we're gonna unselect that one, and we're gonna choose the bottom blind dato uh, layer. Make sure, because you can have multiple layers selected that you don't have multiple layers selected when you do this particular one. You may wanna have multiple layers selected, but I don't, I just want this one that's here. And I wanna make sure that Every time I recalculate this toolpath, it's gonna to take a look for this information on that particular layer um, every time. So we're gonna associate that, this information with this toolpath, and we'll close this down. Now again, we're gonna make sure that we rename this properly. So let's go up to our um, layer drop down here, and we're gonna find the date, uh, bottom blind datos. We'll right click on that. We're gonna go rename, right click on that, and we'll go down to copy. Go down here and we'll select the one just the one and we'll right click and then we'll paste that and then we can go ahead and we can calculate that and let's preview that visible toolpath and that's exactly what I want. And it's colored yellow because up here I've got the global fill color to be set to yellow. That's just so I can see it a bit easier. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. 
So that's great. So let's go ahead and close this down and let's go back to our 2D view again. And we'll move on to the next two Dato toolpaths, which are exactly the same as this one. Again, we're just setting out as different toolpaths in case something down the road does change for those particular use cases. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the next two toolpaths and we'll come back in a minute to start looking at the last set of Dato toolpaths. And there we have it. Those are the first three Dato toolpaths. They were all profile cuts on the inside of those lines, and they all look great. So let's go ahead and close this down, back to our 2D view again, and we'll start looking at the next three toolpaths. Okay, for these next three Dato toolpaths, we are going to be using the pocket toolpath, not the profile toolpath, like we did for the last three. So let's go ahead and click in the white space here again to make sure we don't have any vectors selected, and we'll go over to our toolpath operations and choose the pocket toolpath. Now what we're going to do is we have a start depth of zero and we're going to cut down 0 0.375 and we're going to remove these two tools out of here because those aren't the correct tools. And we're going to go back into our tool database and we're going to select the 3 8 inch end mill again making sure that we have the right material and the right machine selected and we'll select that. Now for this particular toolpath, we only we want to make sure that we change the step over temporarily. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit that and we're going to go into our tool and we're going to change our step over to be 0.25, so a quarter inch, okay? And we're going to select okay. Now again, this is only going to change that step over for this toolpath. It's not going to change it in our tool database. So it's good to keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and do a raster toolpath, but we're going to make sure it's set to zero degrees because these are only going to be horizontal um, vectors. So it's going to make it easier for us to, to pocket those out and make it much faster in the end. We're not going to worry about the ramp plunge moves. There's no pocket allowance. And we're going to go ahead now and go into our vector selector and start to select what we want it to choose. So we'll go in, we're going to choose to, um, again, all closed vectors, okay, on the back bottom dato. Okay, we'll see that we have one selected and that seems appropriate. We'll associate that toolpath with this uh, with this set of settings here every time we recalculate that. So we'll close this down. I'm going to go up here to our layers drop down like we've done before. And we're going to right click on that. And we are going to rename that. Right click and copy. Paste that over top of the one here. Right click and we can paste. Then we'll calculate that. And you'll see when we preview that toolpath, that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead now for the next two toolpaths and do that same thing. Again, we're just setting this up so that in the future, if we need to change one of the certain depths on one of these layers, then we can do that independently and not mess up the other layers. So let me just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, that looks great. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. So let's go ahead now and close down our preview. Go back to our 2D view, and we need to do our last toolpath. And this is going to be for our cutout uh, toolpath. So for the last time here, we're going to go into our white space and make sure we have nothing selected at all in our view. And then we're going to go over to our profile cut. So this cutout pass will be a profile cutout 
We go ahead and select that. Start depth of zero. We're going to go all the way through our material. So if you happen to forget what your material thickness is, you can just type in the letter Z and then press equals on your keyboard. And that'll tell us that the material that we set up was 0.75 of an inch thick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use this same tool uh, if, to cut out to do our final cutout, which is fine. We are going to make sure that we cut outside of the vectors. That's important because if we go on the inside, then our parts should be smaller than what they should be. And same with if we go on the if we cut on the actual line, then our parts will be smaller than what we expect. So let's go ahead and cut on the outside of that. And again, we're going to skip all of this here and we're going right down to our vector selector. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We're going to make sure that we still choose all closed vectors. And this is probably the most important on your cutout pass because you're not going to want to cut uh, an open vector uh, to cut something out with because uh, that will give you some interesting effects. So we're going to go ahead and just make sure we choose only closed vectors on the cutout level or layer, excuse me. And then we're going to go ahead and associate this toolpath with all of this information all these filters that we've set up here and you can see that it selected the right vectors for us which looks perfect close this down again we're just going to go ahead and rename this we know it's called cut so i'm just going to type in cut and then we can calculate that and we can preview our visible tool paths and that looks perfect and we can go back to our 2d view again Okay, so now that we have all of those tool paths set up as templates, then we can go ahead now and think about how we would like to save these off. So there's a couple different options. We can save them off one at a time if we'd like to by using the save selected tool paths as a template. Or what we can do is we can select them all and save them all off as one big tool path template file. And in most cases, especially if we're be working with the same uh, sort of cabinet files, then probably this is your best way to do it in the end, but you can choose what the best option is. So for us, we're going to go ahead and choose that and we're going to save it off. We're simply going to save it off into our tutorials folder um, and we're just going to leave the name as it is and we'll click save. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is we don't want to lose all of that work we did as a typical file. So we're going to go up to file and we're going to choose save as and we are going to rename this and we're going to call it toolpaths. This will be nice that if in the end we need to update this toolpath template or we need to change anything about it, we've got that master file that we can go ahead and edit and then re-export out our toolpath template. Okay, so now how do we go about putting this toolpath template to work for us? Well, first of all, we're going to need to get a file from a cabinet maker and that file needs to be set up with the layers that you set up this template file based on. So again, if we look at our layers up here at the top, you'll see that we have hinge holes, shelf holes and all that sort of thing there. So as long as they've used that same naming convention, then you're good to go. Now, the file that you might get from a uh, cabinet maker may be one large DXF file with everything in it, or you might get a folder full of a whole bunch of little DXF files that you need to put back together again. In our case, we've got an, a file folder full of a whole bunch of little files, so we need a little bit of help to put that back together again. So let me show you how that's done. So first of all, we're going to go to File, and we're going to close this down. And then we're going to have a look and at what's inside of this file folder that we were given. So if we go to file and we go to open and we look at this cabinet design files folder here, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of DXF files here that we need to put back together again so we can actually create or cut these cabinets out on our CNC machine. So we're gonna cancel all that for right now. Now, how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna use a thing called a gadget. So what is a gadget? A gadget is a small, program that can be run within the software to do certain tasks. And we have a whole library of gadgets on our website that you can look at at gadgets.vectric.com. You can have a peek there and you can look at all the gadgets that are available for your software. Some of them are kind of neat and some of them are kind of handy to have in your back pocket. And this is one of the gadgets that gets shipped with your software. It's called the DXF batch processor. So if we go ahead and click on that, we'll be given this form to start to work our way through. So first of all, we need to choose our directory where the DXF files are. So let's go ahead and choose that. And we're gonna choose the cabinets design uh, files folder here. So we can click okay. 
We're going to ask it to process our subdirectories. I don't think there are any, but we'll get it to do it just in case. We're going to look at our layout controls here. We're going to go with the number of drawings in a row will be three. But we're going to have a gap of four inches. And we're also going to have a gap in the rows between four inches here. So this is between the drawings and this is between the rows. Okay, now we can go on to setting up our job dimensions. So we're going to be using a piece of material that's going to be 96 inches across by 40 inches tall. The thickness of our material is going to be 0.75 of an inch. Of course, we're using inches. We're going to use our XY datum off the bottom left-hand corner, and then we're going to set our Z origin off the surface of our material. So we can just go ahead and click OK. Now there's no job loaded, so it's going to create a default job for us. And once it's all finished, it's going to tell us that it's processed 56 different files. And we can just click OK if we're happy with that. And that looks pretty good. You'll see that it's gone ahead and imported in all of those vectors for us, except for they're spilling out over top of the edge of our sheet. Well, how can we go ahead now and get those to be nested onto multiple sheets? Well, we're going to use the nesting feature of your software to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what we're going to need to do is select all of these different vectors here that we want to nest. So we're just going to marquee select all of those. Now I'm not going to get into all the ins and outs of the nesting form here. We have a tutorial that we'll go ahead and link to in the related videos uh, that'll explain this in depth. So we're just going to glean over it just to give you the information you need for our file. So our tool diameter is going to be uh, 0.375. Our clearance is going to be a quarter inch between um, the tool and the next part. Our border gap is going to be set to zero. We're going to make sure that we rotate our parts, but only 90 degrees, nothing in between. They need to be 90 degree increments. We're not going to mirror our parts. We're not going to allow parts to fit inside other parts. We are going to go ahead and delete out the original parts. That's perfectly fine. We're going to nest from the bottom left hand side of our sheet, bottom left hand corner of our sheet, excuse me. We're going to nest along the X axis. We're not going to use any bounds. We're going to go ahead and just make a copy of these just once. We don't want multiple copies, so we're just going to click apply. And then we're going to go ahead and click the preview button. And once we're all done, we're going to be presented with the all the different sheets. So there's seven different sheets and we've got all of our parts nested up on all of those sheets. And that looks pretty nice. So I'm just going to click OK. So we can go ahead and navigate through all these sheets if we'd like to just by double clicking on them. And you can see that sheet six looks like that. So we can kind of double check all the work to make sure nothing's gone or nothing's falling apart on us. And that all looks really good, I think, in the end. So let's go back to sheet number two. We do have an empty sheet. That's the sheet one that we started out with. You can remove that if you'd like to. I'm just going to leave it there. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and import in or open up our toolpath template that we worked really hard to set up. So let's look at our layers, first of all. Now, I like to open up our toolpath tab without closing down this layers menu here. So let's just go ahead and click on the toolpath, and we'll pin that in place. And that's... Well, we can have both of those out. Now we're going to go ahead and load in that toolpath template. Navigate over to our tutorials folder. We'll grab that template file that we saved off and we can open that up. The software is going to ask us if we'd like to apply that template to all of the sheets. And we're going to say, yes, we do. And it's going to go ahead and work through that one sheet at a time. Now, if it can't find some vectors on a particular layer to create a toolpath, it's just not going to do that for us. And we'll see that in a second, especially when we look at like sheet number two. You'll see there's only one toolpath set up because there's only profile vectors on the actual sheet that we're looking at here. Okay. Now, if we want to go ahead and take a look at other sheets, we can use this drop down menu here and we can go ahead and select like sheet four. You'll see all the different tool paths that have been, been, been created for sheet four. And that looks great. We can preview those and make sure they look OK. And then if we want to go ahead and look at all of our sheets at once, we can go ahead and select that and we can take a look through all of our different sheets and make sure that everything is OK. And I think that that looks pretty great. So now we can go ahead and start to save off those tool paths to get them cutting on our machine. We hope that you have seen in this video how taking a bit of time to set up a tool path template could save you a lot of time in the end. If you're interested in other types of jobs that tool path templates could help you with, have a look through the related videos where you'll find a few other great examples.